Good morning, Himmelt. Welcome to worship on Easter Sunday. I hate to interrupt the Christian fellowship that was uh, going on in a hearty way here, but we will have plenty of opportunity after our worship service to uh, enjoy some refreshments and continue our Christian fellowship. And I also wanted to mention that the refreshments are sponsored today in honor of Lena Shade's birthday. So everyone can stay. <laughs> We can stay and help her celebrate. Today we are having pew communion, and I would remind those who are joining us online that we will appreciate if you just mail in a record of your communion, a little note, so it can be recorded. And we are collecting the noisy offering. Uh, we do have the, um, the, the Buckets for that in the back, that's always fun, and it's for a good cause, as uh, we know. It goes to help uh, people with medical expenses, our, our own members, and just people in our community, anyone that we hear about that, that we think would have a need. Um, and we have a busy week at the church this week. If you want to turn to your calendar of events in the bulletin, uh, the ladies will be meeting tomorrow evening, and that is the ladies group meeting, but anyone is welcome to attend, including men, because there's a special program tomorrow night, a speaker on hands-on CPR, and that can be uh, life-saving, and it's certainly good to have some knowledge about, so you're all invited to come out for that here at, at 7 o'clock in the social hall, and the... Uh, Cemetery Association's meeting on Tuesday. The choir practices return to their regular schedule on Thursday night. Uh, next Sunday, we will be collecting on behalf of the backpack program, and the current needs are listed in the bulletin. Uh, they uh, still remain the, the same from, from what we had contributed last month. And we do um, need help with monetary contributions towards the refreshment, so we can all enjoy that fellowship, which is so important to us. Um, if you want to help with that, see Sandy or Robin after church today. And we want to add a young person who is due some congratulations for a scholastic accomplishment. We, have, of course, recently did review the, uh, the young people who received honors at their high schools. And we want to add to that Cassie Snyder, who is in the back, we, um, made the dean's list at Wilkes University. So congratulations. <laughs> OK, any other announcements before we turn to the prayer list additions? And we have a pretty lengthy list of people to add to pray for today. Okay, well, first of all, Leon Latchaw, she fell, had some fractures, so we want to pray for her. Reverend Donald Snyder, a UCC clergy colleague of mine, took a really nasty fall at his home and had to have eye surgery as a result of injuries uh, to his eye. Um, also praying for Mary Hoover, who will be having a hip replacement tomorrow, and... Um, we have a serious illness here. Kathy Siccarelli, a diagnosis of cancer. Uh, Warren Diggins, beginning hospice care. And then we're praying for the family of Jim Inch Sr., who uh, departed this past week. Anyone else to add? Okay, well then I would invite everyone to listen to the prelude as we continue to prepare for our Easter worship on this beautiful day.
stand if you are able. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Now I would invite everyone now to turn toward our baptismal font at the rear of the church. And look, there is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Amen. Look, there is water. Here is our at the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Here is the water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia.
gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak. I now realize that it is true that God treats everyone on the same basis. Whoever fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him, no matter what race he belongs to. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know of the great event that took place throughout the land of Israel, beginning in Galilee after John preached his message of baptism. You know about Jesus of Nazareth and how God poured out on him the Holy Spirit and power. He went everywhere, doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of everything that he did in the land of Israel and in Jerusalem. Then they put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from death three days later and caused him to appear not to everyone, but only to the witnesses that God had already chosen, that is, to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from death. And he commanded us to preach the gospel to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God has appointed judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets spoke about him, saying that everyone who believes in him will have his sins forgiven through the power of his name. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24, as printed in the bulletin and on the screen. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good and his love is eternal. The Lord makes me powerful and strong. He has saved me. His power has brought us victory, his mighty power in battle. He has punished me severely, but he has not let me die. This is the gate of the Lord. Only the righteous can come in. I praise you, Lord, because you have heard me, because you have given me victory. The stone which the builders rejected as worthless turned out to be the most important of all. This was done by the Lord. What a wonderful sight it is. This is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate.
The second lesson is written in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. And now I want to remind you, my brothers, of the good news which I preach to you, which you received, and on which your faith stands firm. That is the gospel, the message that I preach to you. You are saved by the gospel if you hold firmly to it, unless it was for nothing that you believed. I passed on to you what I received, which is, the greatest, which is of the greatest importance, that Christ died for your sins, as written in the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised to life three days later, as written in the scriptures, that he appeared to Peter and then to all 12 apostles. Then he appeared to more than 500 of his followers at once, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James and afterwards to all the apostles. Last of all, he appeared also to me, even though I am like someone whose birth was abnormal. For I am the least of all the apostles. I do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted God's church. But by God's grace, I am what I am, and the grace that he gave me was not without effect. On the contrary, I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, although it was not really my own doing, but God's grace working with me. So then, whether it came from me or from them, that is what we all preach, and this is what you believe. The word of the Lord. Please stand again if you are able for the reading of this morning's gospel from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. After the Sabbath day was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, at sunrise, they went to the grave. On the way, they said to one another, who will roll away the stone from the entrance to the grave for us? It was a very large stone. Then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rolled back. So they entered the grave where they saw a young man sitting at the right who wore a white robe. And they were filled with alarm. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was nailed to the cross. But he is not here, he has risen. Look, here is the place where they laid him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and ran from the grave because Fear and terror were upon them, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord on this day. Please be seated, and at this time I would invite the children of the congregation to come forward for your time in our service. And we have Autumn with us this morning, who is the author of all of our children's time messages, and will present herself today. Good morning, everyone. There's so many people up here today. Um, today's a very special day. Do you all know what today is? Yeah, that's right, today's Easter. So for the past 40 days, we've been preparing for Easter during a time called Lent. And during Lent, we reflect on what Jesus did for us and we get our hearts ready to appreciate Jesus' death and the sacrifice that he made for us. Now, during Lent, while we're getting ready for Easter, there's a word that we actually don't say during the church service. So if you know the word, don't say it yet, but for those of you that go to Sunday school, do you remember what that word is? <laughs> That's okay. Um, 
Peggy actually taught about this word during Sunday school a few weeks ago. And Jacob, you hid the word during, in the church somewhere. Do you remember where you hid the word? Do you want to go get it so you can show everyone what it is? You want to open it so we can show everyone? So now that Easter is here, we say this word again in the service, but during that time we don't say it. And it's a very special word. And that word is Alleluia. Does anyone remember what it means? It means praise God. And it's a very, very powerful word of praise. So the angels would often say Alleluia when they were praising God. And that's how we know that it was really special. And people would say it with lots of joy and lots of love in their hearts. So God gave us the ultimate gift with his son, Jesus, and Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us. What Jesus did for us was amazing. He died and he rose for us because he loves us so, so much. And now that Easter's here, we celebrate that love. And we celebrate the sacrifice that they made. And that's why we use the word Alleluia again. So can you say Alleluia with me to show God how much love and joy we have in our hearts? Alleluia. So whether you want to use the word Alleluia or use your own words, we just have to remember to thank God and Jesus for the gifts that they gave us and to thank them for loving us so much. So let's say a prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to guide us and teach us how to love and worship you. Help us follow the path that he has laid out for us. Amen. Sing really loud, okay? Oh. Here you go, Lana. Okay, is everybody ready? So we're gonna have the congregation sing the hallelujah to give us and praise you, Lord. And at the end, everybody says it, okay? You ready? Well, that was fun. What a great group of kids. Okay, well, today marks the 251st time the members of this congregation have gathered together to celebrate Easter. And through the history of the entire church, we are getting close to the 2000 year marker since the event of that first Easter when the women went to the tomb and found it empty. In the intervening years, Christians through the ages and around the world have celebrated Easter. 
And as we understand it, Easter is the most important day for us as Christians, perhaps for the entirety of humankind and the entirety of this world of God's creation. And having said all of that, I must add that I was a little surprised to find an online article entitled, 14 Reasons Some Christians Do Not Believe the Easter Story. Because I kind of thought that for us as Christians, Easter is the central event of our faith. In the calendar of the church, Easter is actually a more important holiday than Christmas, which actually is the favorite holiday for many of us. But as I read this article, I discovered that our gospel lesson for today is the source of some of those doubts of Christians who do not fully believe in Easter. Our lesson ends when the women who had discovered this heavenly messenger instead of Jesus' body in his tomb, well, they flee in shock and fear. They are afraid to tell anyone about their experience. The angel has told them that Jesus will be going ahead of them to Galilee. And in the older and shorter version of the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel ends with the women finally summoning the courage to share their experience with the disciples, and it reads as follows. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. In this most ancient ending of this most ancient of the Gospels, there is no real record of any actual resurrection appearances. The Gospel does not say how it came to be that Jesus sent out his disciples to preach. And that's just not enough for many of us modern types, and it, it was not enough for many in the, the ancient world either. We all know the story of doubting Thomas, who did not believe Jesus could have been raised from the dead until he himself saw the risen Christ. And the entirety of chapter 9 was appended to the original ending of Mark to include some of the accounts of the resurrection appearances. So there could be no question about the reality of this foundational event of our faith. But I would suggest this morning that there is a buried treasure for us in that original ending of Mark's Gospel, our lesson for today, which was followed by the verse which I just read about the women sharing their experience with Peter and the disciples going out to preach. As one scholar notes, that buried treasure for us can be found in verse 7, as the angel speaks to the women, but go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Now, as I said at the beginning of my message, we live almost 2,000 years past that day when the women found his tomb to be empty. Jesus' resurrection appearances, as recorded in the Gospels, were localized to a particular time and place. And so there never was and there never will be any opportunity for us to experience them. But in our most ancient ending of Mark, the angel promises the disciples a future encounter with Jesus, who will go ahead of them as they plan to return to Galilee. That message given to the women so long ago is one which can ring through the ages to reach us today. We too may anticipate an encounter with Jesus as the risen Christ. 
for he goes ahead of us as we continue on our own journeys through this life. And in providing no localizing details of the when and where of Jesus' actual appearance, the ancient text of the Gospel of Mark <coughs> leaves open the possibility that Jesus may yet appear to his present disciples. It could be anywhere or any time. For we are the heirs to that promise given by the angel at Jesus' tomb. Now, St. Paul is actually our most ancient voice in the New Testament. And in his writing, as in the most ancient text of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus' resurrection appearances are not localized to any particular time or place. Instead, the apostle presents us with this lengthy list of those who have experienced the presence of the risen Christ. There was Peter, then the 12, then over 500 brothers and sisters in Christ, then James along with other disciples, and finally also Paul himself. Paul describes his own experience elsewhere as talking about this experience as having been caught up to the heavens and not knowing whether he was physically or spiritually present with Christ there. Now, he speaks about his own experience in 2 Corinthians, but he says nothing in any of his writings about how any of the others on his lengthy list of those who experienced Christ's presence you know, might have in what manner, how it happened, when, where. He doesn't tell us any of those details of how Christ who has died but is now living came to appear to so many. And yes, the absence of detail in Paul as in the ancient text of Mark, does feed the doubt of those who do not believe, fully believe, in Easter. But, conversely, we can say that it opens the possibility for us to be included among those who have experienced Jesus' presence as the risen Christ. Like Paul, we were not timely born to follow Jesus during his lifetime. Paul, of course, much closer to that than we are. But we are among those who follow Jesus now in our own time. And as followers of Christ, we anticipate the experience of the fullness of his presence at the time of our departure from this world. But until then, there may be times when we, in fact, might catch a glimpse of him. Although we do not know where or when that may be. For now, may we hold on to the angel's promise that Jesus, who is now the risen Christ, will go before us. May we move ahead on our journeys through this life paying attention so that we might catch sight of him and with the certain knowledge that he will never lose sight of any of us. Amen. <laughs>
please stand once more if you are able. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. And now we confess the faith that does bring the possibility that you and I too may meet the risen Christ through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church for the world and for all of those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, your church, where the church is persecuted, protect it, where the church is privileged, grant it humility, where the church is fractured, heal it, guide us all to embody Christ's love in our world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for people everywhere who are in need of your presence. And we would like to lift before you now the needs of these members of our own community and persons close to our own hearts who are in need of your healing hand to rest upon them. We pray that you might be with Leon, that you might be with Pastor Don. Grant healing to both of them who recuperate from injuries. We pray that you might be with Mary who prepares for surgery. We pray that you might be with Kathy, who is dealing with a cancer diagnosis. And we pray that you might be with Warren, granting him peace as he begins hospice care. And we know that there are those who grieve. And we pray that you might grant the comfort of your presence to the family of Jim at this time of his departure. And we know there are others in need and we lift them and their needs before you now, speaking their names on our lips and in our hearts. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, 
we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the eternal mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
And now for those gathered here and for those joining us online, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. Blood of, the blood of Christ shed for you, take and drink.
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
I know I'm three caller. Oh my God! We're getting wrong. 